Chemistry Behind Chernobyl by Gavin O'Connor. Some key terms before beginning. Megawatts is a unit measure of power equal to 1 million watts, usually used to measure the output of a power station. An RMB, RBMK-1000 is a reactor type that uses control rods to both moderate and accelerate reactivity. Reactivity is the ability to undergo a chemical reaction. A coolant system is a type of machine used to prevent the core from melting at high temperatures. And control, control rods are used to vary the output power of a nuclear reactor. The nuclear power plant in the city of Chernobyl contained a total of four reactor chambers. Reactor number four was the newest reactor, reactor at the Chernobyl power plant in Ukraine. The reactor was an RBMK-1000, which meant that it used control rods to both moderate and accelerate the reactiv reactivity if need be. This type of system also allowed for the use of pressurized water as its coolant system, which is a type of machine to prevent the core from melting at high temperatures. The chemical disaster at Chernobyl was caused by a lack of knowledge in chemistry and carelessness. The Deputy Chief Engineer for Operations, Anatoly Dietlov, as seen on the right, oversaw the testing of the reactor and made the grave mistake of failing to shut down the reactor before it was too late. The strive for success and the chemical ignorance of the chief engineers would be the biggest factor resulting in the absolute destruction of Chernobyl. Here on the left, we see the control rods in reactor number four, and on the right, we see the coolant pumps that were used in reactor number four. In 1986, reactor number four would be tested to see how it performed under a power outage. On April 25, 1986, at 11.55 p.m., several of the engineers threatened to leave the power plant as they were already hours behind schedule. It began to appear that the testing would not happen, especially since the representative from the Nuclear Safety Department never arrived to oversee it. However, if the test was not completed that night, the same opportunity would not arrive until the next year. Despite the dangerous and unfavorable conditions, Dietlov approved the testing of Reactor 4 and threatened workers with job termination if the testing did not happen. On April 26, 1986, at 12.30 a.m., the preparation for testing was near completion. However, the senior reactor control chief engineer, Leonid Toptunov, the guy on the right, did not choose an autopilot energy level, which regulated the use of energy automatically throughout the test. Once testing began, the autopilot began to bring the energy towards zero megawatts, which is a unit to measure energy. However, the program specified that the test should not be undertaken below 700 megawatts. No reactivity remained within the reactor number four, but it was not shut down. Dietlov refused to stop the test. In order to raise the power to continue the test, Dietlov ordered more control rods to be taken out of the core of the reactor, leaving it even more unstable. While Toptunov at first would not allow the removal of the control rods to increase the energy, he was once again threatened with unemployment and he submitted to Dietlov's orders. He and another engineer went and removed 203 out of 211 control rods from the core. The energy within the reactor was able to be brought up back to 200 megawatts. After the increase in energy, the coolant pumps, which were machines used to pump water into the system to keep the core from overheating, were brought back online and were pumping near maximum power. Since these pumps were pumping at maximum power, it did not allow water into the core as the pumps continued to pump too fast and would turn the water into steam. However, everything seemed to be going well from the control room to the engineers, but more boiling water continued to enter the core. As the test concluded, the removed control rods were placed back into the core at the same time. When all were placed back in at the same time, a tremendous power surge occurred. This was because the tips of the control rods were made out of graphite a reactivity accelerator. The reactor increased to over 33,000 megawatts and it was only designed to work at no more than 3,200 megawatts. The steam allowed for radioactive decay, which is when the water's nucleus began to gain too many neutrons and the nucleus itself would fall apart, releasing a lot of energy. This cycle would continue in the core without the engineers noticing 
and energy was continuously being released into the core, increasing heat and increasing reactivity. The heat in the core reached the fuel of the reactor and continued to grow hotter and hotter, creating more steam and began to set fire to the graphite within the core. The 180 pound control rods began to bounce up and down with ease and the coolant system began to fail. The lack of water coolant and the continuous rise in temperature resulted in all the remaining water in the system to be turned to steam. This would rupture the fuel rod channels, locking the control rods into place, with the graphite tips being in contact, continuously accelerating the reactivity of the reactor. The reactor continued to rise to 8,402 degrees Fahrenheit as it continued to destroy itself. Emergency warnings began to go off within the control center and the engineers became aware that the reactor was being destroyed. In an attempt to quickly prevent any disaster, a head engineer launched the emergency shutdown protocol. However, by the time he had realized the severity of the situation and attempted a shutdown, it was already too late. The nonstop creation of the extremely pressurized steam lifted the lid of the core allowing oxygen to enter. The oxygen combined with the hydrogen and the extremely heated graphite which created a large explosion that caused the disaster of Chernobyl. A large torching fire engulfed the entire unit, and firefighters could not put out the fire as water would turn into steam too quickly when it was in range. The fire would last for about a total of 10 days. After being exposed to the radiation and surviving, Dyatlov was arrested and found guilty for failing to follow safety procedures. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. After being released, he blamed the accident that occurred at Chernobyl completely on poor design. There was no certain solution to what exactly happened at Reactor Number 4 until reports came out about Tietlov's threats towards his subordinates. The explosion of Reactor Number 4 and Unit 4 allowed for the release of nucleotides into the air, causing radiation to occur in the nearby town of Chernobyl and all other wildlife in the proximity. The town of Chernobyl would become a ghost town. The main problem was, at this time, the containment of radiation spread for the future. To fix this, it was decided that the sarcophagus, the structure that contained reactor number 4 at the time, needed to also be contained itself. In 1992, Ukraine held a competition for a new structure to replace the then current building that confined Chernobyl. The United Kingdom's submission of the new safe confinement had won, and construction for the massive dome began in September 2010. Construction finished in July of 2019, and the movable dome was placed over the radioactive site. Still to this day, radiation levels in Chernobyl are very high, but are heavily contained due to the new safe confinement dome.